with the national championship game. Shout out to Ed Orgeron and other coaches to understand that even if you fail, you're first. And that's all that we're trying to do. I appreciate all the communication that I've had on I told you before that. Welcome to X and O's the Joes. I'm Gene Clemens. Thank you for joining us again. It's another week. It's been an exciting weekend of football culminating yesterday with the national championship game. Shout out to Ed Orgeron and LSU for knocking off Clemson and, and doing away with their, uh, their two-year unbeaten streak. It's a really great story and an opportunity for coaches to understand that even if you fail your first time, there's an opportunity for you to have a, re, a, re, a rebirth, a resurgence, as long as you can learn from the mistakes that you made in the past. And that's all that we're trying to do. We're trying to scheme things up so that we don't make the same mistakes that we made before. Now, I appreciate all the communication that I've had on Facebook or on YouTube about what I'm doing and, and, and the videos and people who really, really like what we're doing. And so um, I, 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 told, I told you before that if you had any questions or if you had anything that you wanted to see drawn up to reach out. And I had a young man reach out to me, a fellow coach. Um, he wanted to know about this, um, what, I, what I realized was a single wing offense that they were running with the Maryland Seahawks. Um, and, it, and he showed me this video from last year, I believe it was, from, well, technically now from 2018 of the 11 and under Maryland Seahawks who are now the 12 and under Maryland Seahawks. And they were running a single wing offense that had some really interesting variations. And so we're gonna take a look at that offense today. We're gonna look at what they did in their, in their um, national game versus, I believe it was the um, Giants that they played, um, why they had success, and why that if you're a youth coach, or maybe even a high school coach, you could implement into this into your offense if you decide that this is an offense that you want to run, you definitely want to understand how a single wing offense works. Number two, if you want to put this in as maybe a package that you run depending upon what you're doing within the game, we're going to talk a little bit about that as well. So it's going to be a great, a great um, opportunity to learn. Stay tuned. It should be fun. Okay, so as you can see, these were all of the formations that the Seahawks ran in their game versus the Giants. And I'm going to step off screen so that you can see all of these formations that they ran. Essentially, the way, from what I counted from the film, they ran a total, they ran a total of 10 different formations um, or wing of, of this single wing variation. But... What I want you to pay attention to is the campfire formation the backs had behind the center. So the X represents the center. So one thing you always want to know about a single wing offense is that most single wing offenses normally for, um, set their formation to one side and one side only. So I would assume that that is what this team was doing. That's what the Seahawks were doing because no time did they ever show a left, a left dominant formation. Everything was always right dominant. Even right here where you had your most balanced formations, it was still right dominant. And so I believe that they do that for consistency it's easier to teach if you're going one way. And quite honestly, when you're running your plays, you're trying to get these people to align to something the wrong way. And every time they adjust, you hit them in a different place. One thing I will notice, if, you, if you're looking at the formations, you will see that they ran formations where they had one person on the left side of the center. They had two people on the left side of the center. Or they had nobody on the left side of the center. They showed a two different formations and variations of kind of the same type of formation where they had nobody on the left side of the center. Now, some of you defensive coordinators may be out there going, oh, my gosh, we would eat this stuff up. But you say that until you have to go up against this and you need your – remember, you as a defensive coordinator, you can't play this 
Your kids have to, and they need to be fundamentally sound. And I think what helped the Seahawks is that the Giants kept kind of getting out of their lanes, which allowed them to take advantage of some things within their formation. So if you're looking at their formations, they had some guys split out wide. You can see they had two receivers. That in that slot receiver was on the ball. You see here three receivers. Both of these guys are on the ball, so we know that that inside receiver is dead. The campfire look where this ball could go to any one of these guys or it might go to one of these guys and he may hand it off to the other. What I noticed about it is it seemed as if when I was watching that most of the time this left back was the primary ball handler. He was the person that got the ball the most. I think it was because most of the time a lot of their offense ran off of this guy going that way. And so because of that, he got the ball a lot. So what I'm going to show to you next is I'm going to show you every play that they ran in the game versus the Giants. All the plays that they ran from these formation, every play that they ran versus the Giants. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so this is every single play that they ran in that game versus the Giants. Now, as you can see here, there's a, there's a familiar trend. It's a lot of stuff that is working to the outside, to the right. The, the beauty of it is, is that the way in which they employ, you don't really know who has this. And sometimes they do a really good job of making your defense have to have really good eye discipline or else they lose this guy. So first play they ran right out the gate. They were here, the ball was snapped to this man, and it was essentially a buck sweep or a full sweep, whichever you want to call it. Everybody's region ripping. These two guys are leading out. This guy's just looking for a seam, and he's out. Had great success with that play. They ran that play a few times in the, in the game. They had success with it. But what this did was it set up everything else off of it. And as you can see, from a lot of the other formations, you had to respect this guy getting to the outside. So they come and they come back with this, the campfire look. They've got a fourth guy in here. He gets the snap, and once he gets the snap, he quickly hands it off to this guy and keeps going as if he's running it. So he hands it to that guy. That guy is blasting right up the middle behind these two guys' block. He's going to find whichever the hole, wherever the hole is, because he's hoping for this guy, these people to flow with this guy. Gets a little flow, he's able to get up north and south and make some yards. You look down at this third play. This guy gets it again, but this time he's getting north and south. However, look at the way in which the other backs employ themselves. So this guy, this guy works this way. This guy works this way. This guy reverses out. I'm sorry, he, he catches it and he goes out. So it looks like these two guys are coming back for some type of reverse sweep. It looks like this guy could have the ball running this way. And if these guys go this way and these linebackers go that way, now this back has an opportunity to hit it and go north and south. If you look down here, now they have their number three guy. They've got more receivers out. Their number three guy that's normally here, he's here. He motions. He motions out and goes into this, into this swing position. This guy gets the ball. He goes directly north and south. This guy goes that way. So now, once again, you've got a guy going this way, a guy going this way. So if any linebacker steps, it opens up the middle for this guy to run north and south. You look over here. Here's that, that, that sweep action again, but this time it's more like a power. This back, who is actually lined up facing, facing the campfire, so he's lined up like this on a snap, he steps and just comes and blocks the first guy outside. So the first guy outside, he blocks. Everybody else goes down, 
you get inside by one, inside by two, this guy follows, and wherever the gap is, he hits it. It's a great, it's a great power play because people are expecting it to go outside, and it hits a lot tighter than what they believe it's going to hit. Down here, same type of action as over here where this guy gets it, but look, no guard. So here's the center. This is really, this is really interesting. They ran this on the goal line for um, their one-point conversion. So he gets the snap. He hands it to him. He goes. That guy is able to find a lane and get in there for the one-point conversion. It was a great little um, wrinkle that they did for a short yardage game. Here's another one with no guard and nobody to this side. This guy actually motions out. So now you've got to, okay, what are they doing over there? Are we going to extend? This guy on the snap, he goes and bubbles. You've got three out here, so you're probably thinking something outside. This guy is the guy that actually gets it, and he runs directly up the field. Now we have more of a traditional-looking um, line, obviously still unbalanced because they've got this guy over here, but guard and tackle or two guys to the center's left, three guys to the center's right. Now this is interesting because this guy gets the ball and he runs north and south, but watch the action. This dude behind the, behind the center reverses out like he's going to run option, like he's going to run option with this back to the left. So he gets it, he's here, and he does this and opens up. That backside back is running like they're running option. This wing on this side runs in between the two. So now it looks like option, but it could also be the option reverse. And all the while, this guy is up the middle. So again, if the linebackers go left, if the linebackers go right, they're wrong. This guy is going to get yardage up the middle. And finally, these are the two plays they ran when they were trying to kind of milk the clock away. They brought in everybody close. They've got the campfire plus this guy off the ball, but a split to this side. So you have to respect this side. They bring this guy in tight. And now it's essentially he's just getting it. And it's that, it's that power action that they were running over here. That guy who's aimed in blocks out. Power action up the middle, and then off of it, they run that, but this guy goes north and south. This dude has a lead blocker. He doesn't hand it to this guy this time. This guy just gets the ball and goes north and south. So those are all of the plays that they ran out of these various formations out of the single wing. Now, some of you might think it looks a little different because it's close and under center with this campfire, but if you were to bring this back into a more of a traditional single wing look where they're in a, in a you know, three, four, five yards off the ball. He's got flanked by a, a, a sniffer and a running back or a sniffer and a second back. It's really the same type of concepts, but they do a really good job of executing for an 11, 11 and under um, group. And that's what I try to tell people all the time. It doesn't matter the age. All you have to do is make them disciplined if you want them to run this type of stuff. Okay, so you're probably out there going, all oh, right, this seems so different, so intricate. How do we guard? You probably guessed it already, how you defend something like this. You have to stay principled. You can't fall in love or you can't get enamored with the glitz and the glamour and the formations. So I drew up a few of the formations that they ran and I'm going to tell you how I would defend it if I was a defensive coordinator. Um, I wouldn't commit super, like a ton of people to the line of scrimmage. Now, this looks pretty 50, but it's a 34, and it's 34 really based on the fact that, you know, who they have on the field, there are certain places I don't have to guard. So, for instance, I don't have to worry about this guy in the pass game because he's dead. He's covered up from the outside receiver. The same over here with this tight end. He's covered from the outside receiver because they have to have seven on the line, which means I don't have to worry about that guy. It's a beautiful thing, right? You don't have to worry about this guy. In pass route, you just have to worry about him in the run game. So now, because everything is strength dominant, 
they've showed on film that either they're running north and south or they're running to the right side. We're not going to try to chase ghosts. We're not going to try to look at um, what they might do. Yes, they could come back with a reverse, but we've got people over there for a reverse. So what we want to do is we want to slant strong or pinch in order to take away the running lanes on any north and south run. We want them to beat us going outside to the right because we know it's coming. So if we pinch strong, I'm sorry, if we pinch, if we pinch with those guys, this guy will slant strong. That means that this guy is a free hitter because there's no gap for him. This guy has this gap with support from this safety at eight yards and this free safety at 10 yards to come in. This guy is going to secure any type of backside reverse or whatever and make them have to either cut it up inside or bounce way outside to where we can have people rally to it. This guy is coming off edge, but he is squeezing on the tackle. So he's not just going to run up the field. That is something that you see a lot of youth league um, defensive ends do or outside linebackers when they rush, they rush up the field. It's easy to block them out. He's going to squeeze and read really what's the block. Squeeze, if he sees this guy attack, he's going to press that guy into the backfield. So he's going to try to get there, but he's going to squeeze first. If that guy tries to wall him out, he's going to explode it, make everything bubble outside so that one, two, three, four can come downhill on it. This guy can over the top. That guy's over the top. We have the second strong safety. And notice that I took the corner out because why would I have another cornerback in when there's no passing threat for me. And if it is, whomever's here, my safety should be able to guard that guy. Whomever's here, my safety should be able to guard that guy. So why am I going to take, and, and why am I going to put an extra hitter in, I mean an extra coverage man in, when I need an extra hitter? Because in a single wing, they are running the ball. So he's going to lock up man to man on this guy. But I want him really to press because that guy's probably looking to block him. So he's going to press, get his eyes inside so that if he has to come off and make a play, he can come off and help. But his first priority is this man. That guy's going to play. These guys are going to play at eight yards. That guy's going to play at, at, at 10 yards. So again, anything that comes outside, he's spilling everything to the outside. They've got one, two. Right? They've got one, two blockers. We have one, two, three hitters. We are going to get there because we're, this guy is going to make this dude bubble outside. Now, those guys are going to be coming. So they're going to be coming to block, coming to block. We, people might say, hey, they've got you outflanked. They've got you outflanked. So the easiest thing to do is to just slant strong. So now instead of pinching, with this guy in here, we slant strong. Those two guys still do the same thing. He says the same thing, but now this guy comes outside. This guy becomes a free hitter now. So he's going to slant strong. He becomes a free hitter. That's one, two, three, four, five guys. And then this guy is great stack spotting, getting over into, into the play. Now, over here, What's different from here over here? Here they've put that guy into the backfield with the wing, but now they've got a tight end. Now again, this tight end is dead. We don't have to worry about him in coverage, but we definitely have to worry about him in blocking. So we bring the strong safety down to linebacker's depth. Everything is the same. We still slant strong. Boom, boom, boom. He's off edge. This guy responsible for that strong side A gap or this strong side gap on um, right here. He's responsible for this gap right here. 
He's coming off edge to make sure there's no nothing coming back. He's a free hitter. He's a free hitter. And we're going to take our chances. Oh, and the free safety is a free hitter. We're going to take our chances. We're going to run to the ball, and we think we're going to have some success getting into these gaps so that these guys have to bubble around, and it makes it harder for them to get to the outside. Now, on the last one, they actually balance it up a little bit in the fact that they have two guys outside that are actually um, eligible to catch passes. However, this is a run-dominant offense so we're not going to chase ghosts. We're not going to look to try to defend um, people in the passing game when they're not looking to pass it. So our cornerback's still going to play hard, still lock up one-on-one -on, -one on that receiver out there or that guy that split. Everything here is the same because we're going to treat this guy just like he was on the line of scrimmage, right? So now we're here, we're here, here. We know we're gonna, they're going to run strong, so we're going to slant. Strong, boom, boom, right? He's free because now that guy has to occupy this end. This guy, worry about that gap. This guy has that gap. This guy is free. He's coming off edge to make sure there's, no, there's nothing coming back to him. He's free. He's free. He's free. We're going to take our chances and say, you're not going to outflank us and get to the outside, and you're sure as heck not going to um, try to run it down our throats because we're going to be coming for you. We have people to get into those gaps. So that is how I would defend something like this single wing offense if I saw it and I was on the defensive side. So that's it for X and O's and Joe's. Thank you for joining us. This is a really awesome offense and would be really difficult to defend because you have to make sure that your kids are disciplined. And because you don't see this all the time, it means you probably only have a week to get ready for it. And if you're in a tournament, you probably only have a night to get ready for that, which is really scary and probably why they have so much success in tournament play. Stay tuned. This week is going to be a packed week. We're going to have at least another three videos dropping this week. There'll be one this today, and then you can, you can bet your bottom dollar is going to be one on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So make sure that you hit the like. Make sure you hit subscribe. You don't want to miss it. This is the first one. It's a youth one. I'll be out with my regular offense and defensive one, and I'm going to have one that's going over something in the NFL. May have a little NFC feel to it. So you want to stay tuned for that. Um, Make sure that you're liking and subscribing because everything that we do here is free. If you want to continue to be free, we need your support. As always, for X and O's and Joe's, I'm Gene Clemens. Y'all have a great one. We'll see you next time.